Welcome to Module 4, Business Analyzer for Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013. In this module, we'll cover Business Analyzer for Microsoft Dynamics GP Client, Business Analyzer for, as a desktop application, Business Analyzer as a Windows 8 companion application, and we'll wrap up this module with covering security. So jumping over into Dynamics GP, We'll start with the Dynamics GP homepage. Business Analyzer, just to give you an overview of what Business Analyzer is. Essentially what Business Analyzer does is it leverages reporting services reports in order for users to see very graphical information in regards to the data from their database. So, for example, in this case we've got top five customers by year-to-date sales. Instead of showing <clears throat> a lot of long lists of information that people have to weed through, Essentially what you do is you see a graphical representation of the data, be able to see it, make some decisions, be able to drill in, get additional information, and, and drive your decision-making process. Business Analyzer also, in, in addition to just using reporting services reports, it also allows customers or users to do something with the report itself. So we call it actionable BI. So it's not, not, a, not just a reporting tool that allows you to see information, but allows you to do something with that information as well. So this is an example from the Dynamics GP homepage in regards to Business Analyzer functionality. So in order to enable Business Analyzer, I would refer you back to Module 1 with SQL Reporting Services. In deployment, your first step will be deploying your SQL Reporting Services reports, configuring, uh, granting security, and at that point, once you finish Module 1, coming back here to get an understanding of the, uh, the functionality around Business Analyzer. So from the home page, if we go to our customize home, this page option, we can see we have a component or a, a type that we can turn on and off or a part within the home page that we can turn on and off for Business Analyzer. If we turn that off, essentially it hides the Business Analyzer component of the home page. We turn it on to enable it. We select the expansion button on the right to select the different reports that we want to represent on the home page. So in this case, I'm, the GP application is making a call out to my reporting services server and returning back a list of all the reports that I have security access to. In this point, I can add, remove uh, different reports that I want to make available or display on my home page. We also have a show all button. So the show all button is, basically says, do I want to show all my reports or charts and KPIs in a single part on the home page or do I want to show each chart individually? So if I turn the show all off, or unmark it, you can see now that I have one part on my home page called Business Analyzer <clears throat> with scroll bars going left to right. So in this case, I've got one component, one area on my home page that contains all the charts that I want to see, and I just scroll back and forth between the charts. If I just do the show all option and select OK, now you can see that I've got all my, charting my charts showing right from my home page. So the nice thing about the GP homepage is I can take the chart components and I can drag and drop them where I want to see them. So in this case, if I want my charts up towards the top of my screen, I can simply move those around by dragging and dropping. I also have the option to expand. So if I want to see more information or more um, highlight more of a, a chart, what I can do is I simply select the expansion button from the homepage and it expands the chart for me. I can switch by dragging and dropping different charts into that sizing look, that folk main area or focused area. So this is the different components. That's how you basically turn Business Analyzer component on for your homepage within Dynamics GP. Now Business Analyzer itself shows up in two, two locations within the Dynamics GP product itself. One from the homepage and the second, which I'll show in a minute, is from your navigation list. So what does Business Analyzer do? Again, we mentioned SQL reporting services and it's actionable BI, things that I can actually do against this report or chart that I'm showing on my page. So Business Analyzer has a set of actions that are available for each chart. The first action is the information action. This action will essentially show me the name of the report, the company that the report is rendered for, the report size, the date timestamp of when the report was rendered, and then also the full path. How do I find this report if I need to look for it? The other option is I can show actions and I can always show actions. <clears throat> so in this case, I'll basically always show my actions and pin them to this, 
pin them to my screen here. So the next action is to view the report. So let's say, okay, I, I've got this total sales for the last four months and I can see, okay, I've got January through April and I can see, you know, basically a summary of my sales for the, those four month, that four month period. If I want to see more information, basically I view the report and viewing the report will open the report in its basically native application, which is Internet Explorer. So if I come in and view the report, now at this point I can change and modify my parameters. So if there's a different date and time stamp I'd want to see, maybe I want to see four months around June, for example. I can do a longer period of time, maybe I want to do 12 months. I can get that information by simply modifying my report parameters on the report. Now at this point, again going back to what we learned in Module 1, is that I have the ability to drill into additional detail. So if I want to look at sales for July, I select the July bar or column in my chart and the application, the reporting services application will drill down and give me all the sales transactions that make up the month, that quantity or that amount for the month of July. So again, a very easy way for me to start with something very visual and get into the level of detail I need in order to make a, a decision. The next thing we'll cover is the edit option. The edit option allows me to open Report Builder and make modifications to the report itself. Now with Report Builder, as covered in Module 1 as well, we have the option to make some very simple report modifications or we can make a brand new report if we choose to do so. So in this case, I'll make again a very simple change. I'll change the fill to maybe something a little more colorful. We'll maybe we'll just say lime green and we'll select OK. And I save the report off. Close the app and go ahead and refresh my home page. And now you can see that my report color has changed or my fill color for the columns has changed. Again, so it's a very easy way for me to start with something graphical and make some simple modifications if I choose to do so. The next option is our copy functionality. Essentially what the copy does is it takes a snapshot and copies that to our clipboard. So I can use that, you know, if I want to collaborate with somebody else regarding this report, I can simply copy paste it into the uh, document that I want to share with somebody or maybe an email for example. The next is the date parameter or date filter. And this allows us to do date and time reporting. So in this case, I've got today's date. I could also change any date. So if I want to look at out into the future of April 2014, I can simply select that date. And now you can see that if I had transactions forward looking, again, this is just sample data, but I've had transactions over multiple time periods or multiple years, I can do a point in time reporting very easily by just selecting the date filter. The last action we'll cover in Business Analyzer is the Start Communication action. When I select that action, it allows me to communicate with people that I'm uh, friends with or co co-workers within Microsoft Link. So by selecting the action, I can see that I have Add a Contact to Report or Select Another Contact. So by selecting the other contact, I can bring up Microsoft Link and I can bring up people within the organization that I work in to communicate with these people. So now at this point, if I want to share information about regarding this report with Daniel, I could easily do that using my link functionality. The other thing that you can do with Microsoft Link is that you can assign contacts. So if I want to go in and say, for instance, for this top sales report for the last four months, if there are certain people that I always communicate with or collaborate with on this report, I can go in and I can assign those people as people I want to commonly communicate with. So I can go in to this uh, assignment window and I can choose a couple different options. I can choose do I want to view this by report or do I want to choose this by view this by contact. Also, do I want to look at the different groups that I have available? I have a family and friends group. I have a my team, for example. I have all the contacts that now that are in my team. So I can see my team and maybe we'll select Jared. And I have all the companies. So in this case, I can do all companies or I can just say for this company, Contoso. So now at this point, I can see I've got from Contoso for the start sales and charts and KPIs, sales per month, my team, down to Jared. And I can select Jared as a contact that I want to use often when I'm looking at this report. <clears throat> so now when I come back and look at the start communication, now I can see that Jared has been assigned to this report. And I can instantly start communicating with Jared. <clears throat> now let's say that Jared was offline. 
and maybe I just wanted to send them an email about the report. So what I could do is I could go in and start the email application by selecting my email button. Again, this is all functionality within Microsoft Link. You can see it opens, it opens my email application. I can type in, please take a look, this report. <clears throat> you can see it also defaults in with Jared's name. And if I do a paste, you can see now it's pasting in that chart. So I've taken something and it's right from my home page. I've selected to use that in my email. Maybe I shrink that down a little bit so you can see it. And so now I can take this report and I can send it off to Jared for him to take a look at. Maybe there's some analysis he needs to do, whatever the case might be, and send it off to Jared. So that's functionality as far as how do I use the copy functionality and how do I use the link communication functionality. Again, I can assign users to a specific report. So if there's different reports that I work with, maybe one's a sales report, one's a uh, purchasing report, <clears throat> there are different people that I want to communicate with or collaborate with depending on the report that I'm looking at. So every report can have different users assigned to it. So it makes it very easy, especially when you look at um, maybe users that are relatively new to an organization. You can go in, you can assign um, contacts to every report that they have because one of the biggest learning curves that people have within an organization or starting a new position is they, they know what they do is, you know, they know as far as the job and what they need to do, but a lot of times they don't know who to talk to when they have trouble or have questions on something. So by adding assignments, it's a quick and easy way for somebody to go in, add assignments and saying, whenever I'm looking at a particular report, these are the people that have been assigned to the report. It's easy for me to start collaboration with those people. So let's take a look at Business Analyzer from the home page. Now the second area that we integrate Business Analyzer into within the Dynamics GP application itself is the purchase, or excuse me, the navigation list. So the navigation list, we'll take a look at our customer list and our demo, our demo list. Again, some of this was covered in Module 1 as far as how to set up and how to create the reports and so forth. But essentially, Business Analyzer is used in two areas. Again, the home page and the navigation list. So when I look at the navigation list, now this gives me an opportunity to see information pertaining to a particular customer in this example. And we have over 30 different navigation lists that we enable Business Analyzer on, and, and customers are just one of, that, one of those lists. So as we go through, we, have, we notice that we have the same options or same actions that were available that we had from the home page. Basically, think it's the same control, just leverage and utilize in multiple locations. So how do I make a modification to this? Or maybe I don't want to see this on my, on my navigation list or I want to make some kind of setting changes to it. So essentially what you can do is you know, there's a couple different options for hide and show and making some customizations. So the hide show, you can turn on and off Business Analyzer, basically hide or show Business Analyzer, if you choose not to have it on. We also have Business Analyzer settings. Business Analyzer settings, we have what's called the dashboard mode, and essentially that just gives you um, all the reports in a tile format. So in this case, I can stack them and I can scroll up and down in my list if I choose to do that. We also have a reload report, so it's basically just refresh or rerun the report. And then we have a user setting. The user setting, there's a couple settings. One is, what is my current role? And again, depending on the role, there are different default reports that I'll have available depending on what I do or what I assign myself to. And then we have some user preferences. Uh, we have, how often should the reports uh, flip through if you're doing a slideshow mode? In this case, I've got it set to 30 seconds. And we also have a setting of, how big do you want these report tiles to be? So let's just say I shrink those down to 120 by 80. We can see now that we have more of a full look of our dashboard right within the navigation list themselves. You also notice that we never lose context of the, of the actions that I can take within Business Analyzer. So even when we're looking at smaller reports, and again, maybe we just stack them up so it's more of a uh, scrolling to the right scenario, it's always available to us. So we can hover over and still get those actions regardless of what size those, um, those thumbnails look like. The slideshow mode is basically we look at full screen. So you can, I'll demo this on the desktop application because it probably makes a little more sense from there. But from the desktop application, you can set it to full screen mode. So an example of why you would do that is there are certain customers that we went to visit and they had uh, a call center, they had a warehouse um, type of uh, scenario or atmosphere environment that they worked in. 
And what they did is they basically would set up these large screens and on these screens they would put in information, rep build reports that it had information related to maybe call, call volume or service levels on the calls. And that's actually a scenario that I was very familiar with in a previous uh, position that I held outside of Microsoft, worked in a call center, and essentially we'd have these big boards that would show how many calls are coming in, how fast we're answering the calls, and, and so forth. Essentially this would be a great opportunity for somebody to utilize this functionality within that environment. So essentially you take the report, you make it large, fill up your whole screen, and then that setting as far as how often do you want to rotate or how often do you want to move slides around um, dictates how, how often those slides or those reports flip through in that full screen. So I'll demo that when we get to the uh, desktop application. All right, so those are settings. And then the last piece is to personalize it or how do I change the reports that I want to see. So I go into the customize option and then report settings and select my expansion. And now at this point, I can select from a list of reports that I have security access to. So again, this is the applications making the call out to reporting services server, bringing back a list of reports that I have security access to or security access to view and allowing me to add those reports to Business Analyzer. So that's how I can make my customizations. Um, again, here I can hide or show Business Analyzer. Here's another option to do that. I can also share this list. So going back to the previous example of as far as onboarding a new employee to our, to our organization or to our company, is that I can take this list, I can modify the list based on what I think this new employee is going to need based on you know, report assignments, who they will need to contact if, regarding a collections report, for example. I can set all that up and then I can take this list and I can share it with that new employee so that when they start accessing information within the system, going into these navigation lists, they have the reports and the tools available to them as far as what they need to see and who they need to contact for certain reports or certain information. They have that right from the get-go rather than to struggle through and try and figure out who do I need to contact for a collections question, for example. I can build that all out in, in Business Analyzer in the, within my navigation list and then share that list with that new employee within my organization. So it's a very uh, compelling way for you to onboard new employees and get them up to speed and, and reduce that learning curve uh, for people that are new to your organization. So that covers Business Analyzer within Dynamics GP Client. So next we'll move over to Business Analyzer as a desktop application. So not all users within your organization are going to be users of Dynamics GP. And so the, really, the real reason for creating Business Analyzer as a desktop application was to allow users, uh, executives for example, the ability to see information that need, they need to run the business, make business decisions right from their desktop rather than forcing them into the application, the GP application or forcing somebody that has access to GP information to create some kind of report and share it out. So this allows them to see all the SQL reports they need and again the information they need to run their business right from their desktop. So let's start with the installation and how that works. So if we open up the media file for Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013, we look at additional products. We have an additional product called Microsoft Dynamics GP Business Analyzer. Now when you do the install, you have three different options available underneath the install. The first option is, stri is strictly just to install the application. So this is me as an end user. I come in here, I install the application. After I do the installation, it will ask me where my SQL reporting services server is located and I'm installed and I'm ready to go. So basically it does need to know where that reporting services location is in order for the GP application or the business analyzer application to make a call out to that the server location and bring back the reports that I have security access to. So you will be asked for the reporting services location. All right, so most end users aren't going to know where that reporting services server location is. So we provided another install option basically to create an install package. When you create an install package, in this case, it's more the IT person that has the ability to go in, launch the install, and then during the installation process, again, the only question that you're asked is where your SQL reporting services server is located. So as an IT person, I've gone in, I know where my SQL reporting server is located because I configured it, I set it up. So for me, that's an easy question to answer. So I create the install package, I answer the question, and you save that off. 
as an install package. Now at this point you can save that install package to a, a network share location. You copy the link to the location, send it out to all the users that want to install Business Analyzer. They basically hit the link and it installs and they're never asked any questions as far as where your reporting service is, server is located because that's already been answered for them. So again, it's an easier way for an IT person to go in and do an install or allow others to do the install themselves. Um, there's multiple options as far as how the install can be done. Once you create the install, installation package, again, you can, send, you can put it out on a share drive and send uh, all the users a link to the share drive to basically in, run the install. Or the other option is you could push this out in a silent update. So as an IT uh, administrator, I can go and I can basically push this application to the desktops of the users that should have the application. So uh, a few different options when you use the create install package versus the install. Okay, so regardless of how I installed it, now I've got it installed. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. So from my Windows 8 start screen, I've got a new tile for Microsoft Dynamics GP Business Analyzer. We'll go ahead and select that. So when you first open the application, I've already pre-configured this, but when you first launch the application, the user will get to a window that looks like this. Uh, the only difference between this experience right now, the way I currently have it configured, and the experience that the user will have the first time is that the role is blank. So we don't necessarily define or predefine a role for every user. What we do is we basically allow the user to select the role that they deem is most in relation to what they do within the organization. So these roles are the same roles that you would see on your home page within Dynamics GP. And when I select a role, it will give me a prompt and say, do I want to add default reports for this role? So it's a very um, convenient way for users to get started quickly. So when they open the application, again, the reporting server has already been defined. They open the Business Analyzer application. They select a role that they want to associate themselves with. And based on the role they've selected, we have a set number of reports that is, is assigned to that role by default. They get asked, do you want to assign these default reports? They click the ask. Now they've got anywhere from five to 10 reports that show up right within Business Analyzer and they're ready to go. So a uh, very quick way to get uh, users started within the application itself. As I look at the user preferences, these are the same user preferences that we showed in the Dynamics GP application itself. So it's how often do I want to change reports when I'm, in, when I'm in the slideshow view, anywhere from never to every five minutes. And again, I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, how often should I refresh the report? So you can basically say from never to 60 minutes, this is how often do I want to go out to the server and check to see if there's basically run the report and check for new data. So you can determine how often you want to do that. Even by having this setting, I could set it to never or I could set it to 60 minutes. I can always refresh at any point in time. So if, if I set it to 60 minutes, for example, and I after a half hour, I'm thinking there's probably more up-to-date information I can pull into the report, I can simply go in and reload my report or refresh my report, and it'll bring back the most recent information. So even though you have a setting for every 60 minutes, you still have the option to go in and manually refresh anytime you choose to do so. And then the last option is what is the default report size when I'm in dashboard mode? Again, so basically how big is that thumbnail or that image when I'm in the dashboard mode? So let's just hit OK from here. OK, so here are the different modes, I guess we'll, we'll call them different modes. So in this case, this is what's considered our split view. So at the top, we have what's called our primary report area. So this is the report that's in context. This is the report that I have my actions available to. And this is the report that I basically have in focus. This is the one I want to work with. As I scroll through, I have this, what we um, classify as the secondary report area. With the secondary report area, these are all the reports that I've selected to use within Business Analyzer. But these are kind of a secondary status at this point. Again, the one that I have focus on is the one that's the primary report at the top and the one that I can choose the actions against. So I can split this, I can make you know, any size I choose to, I can modify the size of the, uh, the application itself and so forth. So that's split mode. If I want to go into dashboard mode, I can either select this button or there's a menu option to go into dashboard mode. And dashboard mode essentially gives me all my reports in a single dashboard. So if I stretch this out, make a little modification to my sizing, 
So now if I want to run something where I just want to show this information on my screen all the time, or maybe this is something I want to show on a bigger screen, again, I can run this in dashboard mode. I can have it the setting to say refresh these every five minutes, and then I can just set it and leave it. And again, if this is an environment where I have big uh, monitors and I want to show this information, I can easily do that by setting dashboard mode and just basically letting the reports refresh however often I chose to do that. The next is your your full screen mode. So in full screen mode, again, this is an example you'd use in an environment where you have larger monitors, you want to push out information to uh, employees within the organization that's relevant to what they're doing at the present time. So in this case, I, again, I always have context of the actions that I want. You can see that every 15 seconds my reports are flipping through. So again, this is instead of a dashboard mode and having all the reports showing up at a, a single moment, I can go full screen so I get the largest picture that I can possibly get or the largest report I can possibly get. Again, I can go, I can flip through these manually if I choose to do that, or again, just leave it because it's set on a timer. We'll go back to split mode. So that's the different modes that you can run Business Analyzer in. Again, looking at the actions, I won't cover the actions because the actions are all basically the same um, as whether I'm using the desktop application or Business Analyzer within Microsoft Dynamics GP. Now there is one selection here for um, select company and that's an additional action that you would see on the Business Analyzer desktop version because in the desktop version you do have the opportunity to use multi-company reports. So a multi-company report would be a report that's reporting from multiple companies. So maybe I have Fabricam information, sales information, I have Contoso sales information. I can see that all in a single report. So let's take a look at one of those reports. Okay, so if I want to add a report, I go back to my menu, I go to my options, select reports. And here we can see we've got a multi-company filter. And let's just say we're going to stick with sales and we'll go sales per month and we'll select OK. So now I've got a multi-company report showing sales per month. And as I go through, now I have the opportunity to go through and basically again filter based on the the information I want to see based on the company that I want to see the information for. So let's go back to our options and show you a few more things on the report selection. So there's a checkbox at the top called show detail folder information or folder view. Let's expand this out a little bit. Okay, so if I want to select a report, let's just say I go in, I want to select the sales per month report. I want to select that report once. I don't want to go into every company. Maybe I have 10 or 15 different companies. I don't want to have to go into each tree structure for every company and find the report and select it. So what I can do is I can show the detail or unselect the detail view. Now at this point, you can notice that the, the tree view in regards to the, the um, companies have all gone away. So basically what we do is we consolidate all the reports and give you the unique report. So in this case, we can go to sales, charts and KPIs. And in this case, if I want to do late shipments, for example, I can add the late shipments report. Now in this case, it will show me the late shipments or I'll add the late shipments for every company that I've selected. So if I go back to my detail view, now I can see late shipments for CES, which is my Contoso database, and late shipments report for my two database or Fabricam. So again, it's, if, if it it's, depends on the approach that you want to take. So if you're coming into this window and you're saying that I want a particular report for a particular company, you have the opportunity to do that. If you also come into this window, the report selection window, and you say, um, I want this particular report for all the companies that it exists in. So then again, at that point, you unselect the view detail checkbox. You, it basically strips away the company context and just gives you a report list. All the unique reports show up in the list, and then when you select the report like it did for late shipments, it automatically adds the late shipments reports for all the companies that that report exists in. I can rearrange the report. Um, again, going back to multi-company and selecting the report. I forgot to insert it last time, so we can do that. We can rearrange the report so we can select the report and basically say this is the order the reports are going to show 
based on um, the secondary report, um, the primary and secondary report areas. Again, re assignments, if I select an assignment, I can go into the assignments window. And again, this is the identical information or functionality that we had within Dynamics GP itself. So I won't go cover it in too much detail, but essentially allows me to say, do I want to view this list based on the report or based on contact? Um, and then it gives me the report and basically who do I want to contact? Do I have a friend or family that I want to uh, contact when I'm looking at this report? Somebody on my team or other contacts that I have within the Microsoft organization that, for this example. So we'll do our assignments we choose to do. So again, selecting OK takes me back to my report area. And now in this case, now we've got that multi-company report that I, again, failed to insert the last time, but now we have our multi-company report. We select the action for the company. Now we can go in and we can say, okay, I just want to see information pertaining to Fabricam. I want to see both, or maybe I just want to see Contoso. So it's a, it's a very um, effective way to look at information across multiple companies and then be able to filter out the information uh, for a particular company if you choose to do that. Now, the, the actions are all the same. Again, I can view the report. It launches Internet Explorer, views the report in full screen, makes the parameters available. So it's, it's all the same functionality. So it goes back to what I said in Module 1, where we're building the report once, and then we're leveraging it across different applications that we can use it with. So again, we're not building a report for uh, Microsoft Dynamics GP. We're not building a different report for Business Analyzer. It's one SQL report, and then leveraged across different applications. So that is Business Analyzer from the desktop perspective. So again, Business Analyzer from the desktop, this is a separate install. It shows up on the media under additional products. You install it. Again, you have two different options. One, you run the straight install. You answer the one question during the install as far as where your reporting services location is at. Or you have the other option to create an install package and deploy that. Um, silently to the, to the users that need Business Analyzer on their desktops, or again, they can go in, put it on a shared location, send the link out to the users, and then the users can just hit that link. So the third area that Business Analyzer is available in is through the Windows Store. So we have a Business Analyzer application available in the store, so you do need to be running Windows 8 or 8.1 in order to use this application. So by going to the store, from my start screen, nope, I don't have an internet connection, but I go to my store and I type in, just start typing in Business Analyzer. Once I get to the store, find Business Analyzer, I basically just download it and it's, and it's installed. It installs in less than 30 seconds, very quick um, application to install. So once Business Analyzer, the, business, the Windows 8 companion app Business Analyzer is installed, it shows up as a tile on your start screen. So we'll launch the application. Now, when you first launch the application, the, the, the companion application will show in sample mode. So when you first open it, you will always have data available that you can start working with. You can you know, play around with the application, see if it's something that you like, see if you want to continue on to configure it, and so forth. But we always start with sample mode so that you always have some context or some data that you can start utilizing or um, using within the application to get familiar with the different um, the actions and functionality that's available within, within the companion application. So as you notice, it does look a little bit different than what you see in the desktop application that I just covered or within the Microsoft Dynamics GP application, but it's essentially the same functionality. Uh, we have added some additional content that we support within Business Analyzer, the companion app for Business Analyzer, but essentially it's I want to view something and I have actionable BI around it. So let's just take a look and see what this application looks like. So as I scroll through, um, when I start, I have a hub or my landing page. Um, you'll hear, hear different uh, terminology as far as what this, what this is when you first open the application. But essentially, this is my landing page when I first open the app. So the application itself will have a favorite chart and three favorite KPIs that you can use. So the favorite chart, in this case, I just have a net income summary but I can easily change it. So if it's something where I want to use expenses or look at it, month to date expenses, all I, want, all I need to do in order to um, change that favorite chart is to drag and drop in a different chart that I have available. 
Same with KPIs. I can take my KPIs, I can rearrange them so if my open accounts receivables is you know, more important than something else, I can place it at the top. I can also add in different KPIs if I choose to do this. Again, very quick, very easily personalized so that I, I'm not necessarily, in, you know, to lack of a better term, stuck with what you give me when I open the application. I can mix and match, I can change out the uh, favorites based on what I like. As we scroll to the right, we have our charts area. In the charts area, we show, in this case, we're showing uh, four different charts. We can add or remove charts by going to the chart gallery, so we'll select our add button. And then we can add or remove charts by simply selecting them from the gallery. In the gallery itself, we also have filters, so if you do have a lot of different reports, then we can filter those out. So maybe if you're just looking for sales reports or just financial reports, it's easy for us to go in and filter those out. When you're done making your selection, you go back to your home screen and your charts are refreshed based on what you've selected. We also have what's called a full view or a flip view it's been termed as. Um, so basically from the charts area when you select a chart, we'll just, uh, for example, select our gross profits daily. It takes us to this full view of the chart and then we have different chart types that you can select from. So if I want to look at a stat column type instead or a line chart, I can easily do that. And I can also get to a data grid view. So when we were designing this, uh, one of the biggest asks that we had from our accounting community or the accounting users was to, you know, this graphical representation of the data is really nice, but I'm, I'm a data person, so show me the data grid. So we can also show a data view that gives you the actual numbers that make up these columns or lines, for example. We also have different options for gross reports, so if you want gross profits. So if you want to look at daily or monthly or quarterly or yearly, whatever the case might be, you can change that, that filter on the left-hand side. You can also integrate with the report by removing certain uh, series in the report. So if you don't want to see gross sales, you simply select on gross sales. It removes it or adds it back to your chart. Now with a Windows 8 application, you essentially, um, if you're using a device, a touch device, um, basically what you do is you swipe up or down with your finger to get the navigation bar or the application bar at the bottom to show up. If you're using a mouse control device, then you use a right click action in order for get the nav to get the navigation to show up. So in this case, we have three actions within our navigation. We have home, we have role. In this case, we have default roles for accounting manager, CFO, and sales manager. And then we also have different companies that you can select from. So this is how you'd switch between different roles and different companies that you want to choose. So if we go back to our start screen, and move over to our next section. The next section we have available is our KPI section. So with KPIs, uh, basically it's a summary of information that we want to see, what's important within my organization, um, but we can drill in to get more detail. So if we want to look at the working capital, we select that KPI. It drills into a chart that supports the KPI. Again, now at this point we can modify which uh, chart type we want to see, which period we want to see the data for, and again the data grid view. So again, it's just an easy way for us to go in and show more detail behind that summary view of the KPI. The last section that we see within this role is for reports. So these are our financial reports. These are our management reporter reports. And so in this case, if I want to look at departmental income, I select the report. It gives me, because we're running in sample mode, it gives me a sample of what this report would look like. If we're actually running in a live environment, this report would launch and I could interact with this report. Again, depending on the functionality that's available for Management Reporter. Okay, so that's my information we can see for my financial officers. So my CFO, we can see the company that we're, we're in, we can see that the role we've selected at the upper left hand, right hand corner, and then we also have the context of the application that we're using. The great thing about the new Business Analyzer app that's available in the store is that I can switch roles, I can switch companies, and we apply different themes to those different roles. So in this case, I'm switching my role from a CFO to a practice manager. A practice manager is essentially a project manager. They need to go in, manage projects, expenses, and so forth. So you can see that as I come into the app, or as I change roles, we have a theme applied to that role. So it's very visual that you are making a change within the application to view information for a different role. So this information, we still have our favorite chart, we still have our favorite KPIs, reports, um, et cetera. 
But now for the project practice manager, we have the projects tiles that are available rather than the reports because this is information that's most important for the practice manager. So this is unique for the practice manager. So as I go in and as I can say I've got a tile that shows or five different tiles that show the different states of the projects that I'm working on and I have an all projects tile. So I'll go ahead and select the all projects tile. Now again it gives me the list or what we call a data grid view of all the projects that I have going on. If I want to look at one of the projects, I select it from the data grid. Now it gives me the detail page. The detail page basically gives me all the information that I want to know about this project. It gives me um, invoiced, hours scheduled, who is uh, the project controller and so forth. And it also gives me the opportunity to communicate just like we have with the link functionality it allows me to make a call, um, a link communication or email to this person that's been assigned to this project. So going back to the home page, we also have one additional role that we have support for. And again, this is just the default information. We'll look at the accounting manager. Now as we look at the accounting manager, we can see that there's a separate, there's a separate list of reports for favorites and KPIs. We can see again, it's visually changing based on the, the role that I've selected. The, the theme has changed. We get a different image in the background, background and so forth. So as I scroll through, same thing. I've got my favorites, I've got my charts, and then I've got my KPIs. As I select a chart, for example, let's just select, select our budget tracking. As I swipe up, you can see now I've got the actions across the bottom. These are the actions that are available in sample mode. Uh, if I've got a live connection, I'll try and we'll get some additional actions that are available as far as the edit and the view. And so that information, those actions that I demo, demonstrated in the desktop version and also the um, version within Dynamics GP, those same actions are available in the Windows 8 application as well. So that's the information regarding the report, or excuse me, the application. So I'll go back to my home screen. Okay, so I run through the application. I really like it. I want to configure it, what do I need to do? Okay, so my Windows 8 device, what you do is you go to your right-hand side, select your settings charm, and under settings, you have a configuration option. So configuration, again, as I mentioned, the application, when you first install it, will be in sample mode. You basically turn sample mode off, and then you type in the location of, or excuse me, you first type in the username, or in this case, our domain and our, our um, ID, so in this case I've got an Azure domain set up with my name. Enter in the password that you use for that domain and that, that ID. And then you have a service connection. The service connection is created by the IT person. So I'll just talk through, the, um, talk through this because it is an IT experience. Basically what you do is you download from, um, in this case, a partner and customer source at this point, you, you do a search for business analyzer, um, companion application services. You download that, it's basically a zip file at the time being. Going forward, um, in the next release for Dynamics GP, it would be included with the media. But in this case, it's a, it's a download for partner, from partner and customer source. But basically, you, you launch the application. And this is the address that you, you get configured. Again, I have a con different configuration in Business Analyzer than I do right here. But you can have different configurations depending on the server that you're, you're uh, connecting to. So essentially you go through the process and say, okay, you have two different options. One is I want to create a service or an endpoint using C uh, Windows Azure, Azure, Azure Service Bus. So you select that if that's the case. Or if you're not using the service bus and you want to use the services natively or expose your services and, and connect to them directly, then you skip that checkbox and you go to this window. Um, essentially what the IT person will have to do is because you're exposing this service. We have a, a business analyzer or a companion application service that you basically install. And the companion application service is what allows business analyzer to talk back through your firewall and allow you to communicate with reporting services and send information back. So think of that service as that middleware, middle tier between your business analyzer application and your reporting services server. So essentially what you do is because you're exposing it outside your firewall, what you want to do is you want to create a certificate so that you can um, have a secure connection or HTTPS uh, connection back through your firewall to make sure it's more secure. You get the certificate, you enter the certificate um, on your computer, and then it allows you to go through and set up the configuration. So there's not a lot that's different between 
the Windows 8 application and the Business Analyzer desktop application. Essentially, the only difference is you're going to name an endpoint or give that endpoint a name. And then the next step in this process is basically saying where your reporting services location is. So it's essentially the same as uh, what you'd see in the Business Analyzer desktop application. So you give it, give it a name and then it generates an endpoint for you. So once you have that endpoint, you send that out to the users. So once you have that endpoint, you'd send it out to the users that are using the application. They go into settings, configuration, again, turn sample mode off, and they would enter in this service location. So you always have a single point that you're, you're, you're referencing within Business Analyzer. So if you have information that's coming from Management Reporter and you have information that's coming from SQL Reporting Services, you, you have a single endpoint that's configured to both of those services. And I'm not going to get into a lot, lot more detail on it, but if you go out and you download the, uh, the zip file on car customer or partner source, there's also a link to a white paper that steps you through the process of creating the certificate and allowing you to, or basically setting up the configuration for the companion application services. Okay, so once I've gotten my connection service, I go ahead and I select connect. Again, depending on my internet connection, whether or not I'll connect here. But you can see that the application is loading. So essentially what it's trying to do is just trying to make a connection to that service endpoint that you've defined here. And then it's also passing in your credentials, your, your domain, your, your ID, and your password, and tries to authenticate who I am to make sure that I have security access to the information that I want to show in Business Analyzer. Okay, so I can see that it, it found the connection. And at this point, I didn't have any default reports assigned to my user ID or to my role that I selected. So I can go in, and again, going and selecting my gallery, I can select Add. And now it gives me this long list of different reports that I can select. So these are the same reports that we've used in other examples as far as within the Dynamics GP application or within the Business Analyzer desktop application. Whenever I go out to view a report, this is the same set of reports. So again, it looks a little bit different because we're more visual as far as representing the reports more visually in a tile format, but these are the same reports. So if I went in and made a change to my cash position detail report, that change is reflected in any application that I use that report for. So I can go in and I can narrow down what I want to see. So I can see that I want just my sales. I can see that this one's cut off a little bit. So maybe I want to just, I can hover over and I get the, the tool tip that gives me the full name. Um, I can go in, maybe look at receivables, uh, aging and so forth. So I can go through and I can select the reports that I want to see. And then at that point, once I've got my report selected, I go back to the home screen by either selecting the home button or selecting the back arrow. Now at this point, it's going back. Again, it's, the connection is a little bit slow here, but basically what it's doing, it's going back. It's going through the service. It's requesting information for the reports that I selected. So you can see the first one came back and it's showing my sales per territory. And as I scroll over, the other ones will begin to fill in as well. Now KPIs, you might say, well, what happened to my KPIs on my start screen? I don't see anything on my landing page. It's because I haven't defined any KPIs. So I just go to the KPIs section, click Add. Again, if I want to do something by sales, I can easily filter it out by sales. If I want to do maybe financial, I can. it's basically a simple change to just go in, select a few KPIs. These may or may not have any data, but you'll get the point. If we go in, go back to Home, and now we can see that the KPIs have been added to my start screen. These are my favorites, and these are the additional two that I've selected. So how does it determine what's my favorite and what just goes over into the KPI section? Well, that's determined based on the order that I selected the KPI. There's really nothing that will allow us to determine what your favorite is or which order you want them to um, display these KPIs in or reports in other than how you selected them, the order in which you selected the reports or KPIs. But again, if it's something where you know you selected your territory, sales by territory as your first chart, but you want to use sales by month, it's just a matter of taking that report and swapping it out. Same with KPIs. So we give you a default order based on how you selected the reports, but it's, it's um, very interchangeable and personalizable uh, based on what you'd like to see. So now we're connected to a live environment. We'll go and we'll select the full version of the report. We'll, again, do a right click in this environment, or you could um, swipe up or down with your, your finger on the dev touch device. Now you can see we've got the same actions that are available. So I got my information, copy, link, 
you know, view, edit, date, and refresh. So these are all the same actions that were available in the other versions of Business Analyzer um, right within the companion application itself. So that's Business Analyzer as a Windows 8 companion application. Again, it's available in the Windows Store. You do need to have at least Windows 8.0 running. It will work on version 8 or 8.1. And so the next part we'll finish off this module with is security. So security is pretty straightforward from business, business Analyzer itself as well. When we're looking at security within Microsoft Dynamics GP, there's nothing to install. Um, basically, you get the Business Analyzer functionality right within Biz Dynamics GP when you install the product and you deploy your SQL reports. So if you if you've deployed or excuse me, if you've installed Dynamics GP, you went through the configuration process, but you don't see Business Analyzer showing up, make sure that your SQL reports are deployed. Once you have SQL reports deployed, um, the functionality just lights up within Dynamics GP itself. As far as the security model, again, I would reference you back to module one where we talked about SQL reporting services. Because Business Analyzer essentially is using reporting services for the most part, um, there are some other contents or content types that we support but we are using Windows Authenticated Security. So you want to make sure that you have a Windows Authenticated um, user ID within the SQL database itself in order for it to grant access to the information. Uh, Business Analyzer is a desktop application. Again, there's no separate security to launch the application itself. Um, you install it as a separate add-on. Um, so when you do install Dynamics GP, you do have to go out to that additional products folder on your media and install it as a separate product. But again, you can you know, have the install done where you run it yourself or the IT person can uh, create the install package and push it out. But as far as security, there's no security to open the app. Um, the security is on the reports itself. So the security goes back to reporting services, security, and leveraging that. So again, no security with the app itself, just on the reports that are visible. And the last uh, was Business Analyzer as a Windows 8 application. The security, again, we're, we're looking back at reporting services to determine whether or not you have security access to the information. So the only other security layer that we have within Business Analyzer is again when you go into the configuration. Again we'll just swipe over get our settings and configuration. The other security will basically be from the application itself. Does the application have security permissions as this user, as, a, as this authenticated user to basically talk through the service, get through the firewall, and then back to the, my reporting services to get the uh, reports that are available to me. So there is a, an extra layer of security within the Business Analyzer Windows 8 application, but again, it's, it's information that it's, it's using your domain credentials and password, uh, basically your Windows credentials, in order to provide the security layer for, for the companion application itself. Uh, but for the content that appears within Business Analyzer, regardless, again, if it's G, within GP as a desktop app or the companion application, the security for the main part is reporting services security. So I would encourage you that if you have some questions on security, um, either read online, go back to module one, and get more familiar with the security around business, or excuse me, with SQL reporting services. Okay, so what we've learned in module four, Business Analyzer. We've learned how to configure Business Analyzer functionality within Microsoft Dynamics GP. And we learned, again, that comes with Dynamics GP. So once you have your SQL reports, deployed, that functionality automatically lights up within Microsoft Dynamics GP. We looked at how to install, configure, and use Business Analyzer for the desktop. Again, this is a, an additional product that you add on from your, your, your Microsoft Dynamics GP media. You go under the additional products, select it, and install it. And then lastly, we looked at how to install and configure the Microsoft Dynamics GP Business Analyzer companion application. So just as a recap there, we went out to the Microsoft Store. Again, we're using a Windows 8 device or 8.1, whichever you choose to use or whichever you one you have. You go to the Windows Store, you type in, just start typing Business Analyzer. The uh, information or the search will find Business Analyzer. You can also find Business Analyzer under the Business section within the store as well. You basically click the Install button. By selecting the install, you're automatically agreeing to the terms of the, the use terms of the application. Again, it takes maybe less than 30 seconds for the app to install. The app is automatically installed in sample mode, so you can go in and start using the application, even though you don't have a live environment set up at that point. 
once you're ready to set it up, you enter your configuration information and you're ready to go. So in recap, for the module or for the course around business intelligence for Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013, we covered in module one, we covered reporting services, uh, basically where it's utilized, how to set it up, how to deploy, what the security looks like. In module two, we covered uh, smart lists, smart list designer and Excel reports and how we can leverage the over 250 Excel reports that are available within Microsoft Dynamics GP. Module three, we covered Word templates. Again, Word templates allow you to easily make changes and modifications to reports without having to go into Report Writer and modify the reports. So you can make simple changes like adding company logos or adding different text into your reports right within Microsoft Dynamics GP or within right within Microsoft Office Word. And the last module, module four, we covered is Business Analyzer. So Business Analyzer has a few different flavors depending on you know, which area, which systems you can, you're using this on. So one is within the Dynamics GP application. Another is from the desktop version and that you can be running Windows 7. And then the last area for Business Analyzer is the companion application for Windows 8. And in that environment, you need to be running Windows 8 or Windows 8.1. So at that point, that concludes this course. And I thank you very much for attending.